everyone I hope you're well it's Lou Collins here and today I've got an exciting project for you because I was asked by the lovely Corinne Robinson uh, who's been a friend of mine for years to take part in her colour challenge now this is a monthly challenge she has a Facebook page and this month I'll put it up here actually this is the colour palette that she's asking you to be inspired by you can create anything based along these colours you pop along to her Facebook group uh, or rather page pop a photo of your project under the post sharing this palette and you could be in with a chance of winning a little bundle of goodies now this month i am supplying the goodies so it's going to be some textures ones i've got these three die sets here that i am going to be sending out to whoever corinne chooses now it's not done by skill or talent it's purely picked at random so please if you've never entered um art or craft competitions before or challenges please do go and do this one because um yeah it's a beautiful colored palette i absolutely adore it. it's actually some of my favorite colors in there and you get to win a bundle and this is international i don't mind where i'm posting this so um definitely i'll put all the details in the description below for you okay so what i'm going to be doing today to work with this color palette so let's first of all look at the colors i've chosen from the distress range so i've gone with mermaid lagoon uncharted mariner bundled sage spiced marmalade and fossilized amber and i'm going to be doing some gel plate printing this is just to create some really textured backgrounds and once i've got my backgrounds i'm going to be die cutting and i'm going to be using a couple of textures dies so i'm going to definitely use this delicate floral panel now lots of you um, absolutely adored this when it launched there's still a few left in stock um, but i'm going to show you a slightly different way of using it um, but essentially this particular die creates the most amazing card base let me show you just white on white how this cuts out look at that so it can cut into the front of your card or you can just cut it all out completely and use it as a panel which is what we're going to do today then i've also got some sentiments here these are from the wildflowers collection however we're going to see how the card develops and i may well use the you are wonderful sentiment instead on my card um, and that's the one that i'm going to be giving away so we'll see we'll see how it develops but first of all we need to get some color down on the gel plate so to do this i have got my five by seven gel plate a clean brayer some scrap card stock or paper just to clean your brayer off onto so you know dogged copy paper things like that absolute perfect even something like newspaper would be fine um, I've got some watercolor card because I want to make this a nice strong card I'm probably going to be cutting everything down and going on to a five by seven card base so I've got that to the side there and I've obviously got my inks plus some water to create some fun effects now I'm going to do the gel plate printing then maybe add a little bit of stamping for additional texture and then we'll build the card so I think because I'm going to be doing the floral panel I'm going to have the florals in the yellows, oranges, maybe even the greens, and then the background's going to be the blues. So I need a background panel first. If you've never used Distress Oxides on a gel plate before, this is such an easy technique. So when you first put them on, you don't see them as bright as you would if you were using, say for example, your um, paints, your acrylic paints. And I think this is a really nice accessible way for anybody to try out gel plate printing. Now I'm just going to mix those two together and as you can see, you can't really see them. But when I take the ink off my brayer there, you really can see that. Now before I press my paper into this, I'm going to probably do a few layers. I'm going to spritz a little bit of water and put it on the plate. Now you can see it beads and hopefully you can see it actually really picks up the colour. It creates the most beautiful effect. Now to keep my printing in the same place because this is an A5 piece of cardstock, I'm going to stick to sort of the top uh, left hand corner. I still don't know my lefts and rights. Just press my paper watercolor paper in there i'm using watercolor more for strength than anything else um, i like the quality feel that you get with water paper when you put it on your cards and lift that up look at that isn't that just absolutely beautiful i love that i think i want to go a little bit deeper and darker so i'm going to this time just put a little bit of um uncharted mariner down i might actually no i won't i'm tempted to try out some others other colors as well but let's stick with the original plan 
So this is just ever so slightly darker. I'm go again going to flick some water on. And while I'm doing this, that on the paper is drying. Okay, so then let's go in with a second print. Make sure we're printing over the top so as not to waste any paper or ink. And I'm just pressing down with my hands quite firmly, ensuring it's not moving at any point. So I tend to have another hand on there all the time, rubbing all over, allowing the watercolour paper to just soak all of that lovely ink up. And look at that. Isn't that just so pretty? Absolutely beautiful. Now let's just take a scrap piece of paper and see whether there's any more to pull off of this plate. Probably not a lot, if anything. Very, very little. That is still quite a lovely effect though. Okay, so now that I'm sure that's probably quite clean, I don't think I need to worry about cleaning it because as we've just seen, I just put white paper on there and really didn't pull much off at all. And if there is a tiny little bit of blue going onto the next layer with the yellows and oranges, then it's really not going to be the end of the world because it will just work well with the background. So make sure my briar is clean. So let's now go, you can see this a little bit brighter. This is the fossilised amber and the spiced marmalade. Again, brayer that over just to make sure that's spread around. You can see a lot of that colour actually comes off onto the um, paper, onto the brayer. Let's do the same. Let's get that effect going with the water. Flick that on all over. Although this is going to be my die cut panel, my floral panel, we'll still see the effect on the larger areas. And let's press this one down. I could do this all day long. I really could. If you've um, seen Corinne's card, um, I definitely encourage you to go and watch her video after this one. I'll make sure it's linked at the end um, and in the description for you. She has actually made a mixed media card. And just lately, Corinne's been getting into mixed media a bit more. It's absolutely stunning. It's got this gorgeous large butterfly with an acetate layer on. It's so beautiful. So go and have a look at that. But look at that. Isn't that just so pretty? Let's do one more layer. This time I'm going to add just the yellow and the green, the sage green there. Let's see how that comes out. Make sure my bray is nice and clean. Let's try and keep these colors quite separate like so. Definitely add our spritz. Now, you don't have to do the spritzing of water. I definitely think it adds to the effect. You could do some stamping into the ink to create a different look. You um, could use a stencil and lift some of that ink up. There's lots of different techniques that you can be doing with your gel plates. Quite simple ones as well. They're not all advanced. You don't have to be a complete master of the gel print to get a fantastic result. So, let's see. There we go, that's just added a little more depth, even more texture. So we've got our two layers. So technically we've now got two beautiful uh, backgrounds, pattern papers that we can be using. So let's put the gel plate items aside. I'll just clean these up and then we'll start making our card. Now because of the orientation of my card base, as I say, this is five by seven. The gel pr prints are also around about five by seven. But my die that I really want to use is a 6x6 square, or just under that. So I'm going to have to alter the um, kind of the, the layout of the card a little bit, but I'll show you how I'm going to do that. So I'm using my smaller Big Shot, so I have trimmed that paper down as much as possible. And this way I can put my die through twice, because I'm going through that extra thick, like 300 GSM, uh, watercolour cardstock, I'm going to be able to go through once like this and then turn it 90 degrees and go through once more and this is going to make sure that I capture every detail but to be honest look that has just cut absolutely beautifully anyway by the looks of it. You'll be amazed at the difference that a die cut makes when it's cut from a textured or patterned paper rather than a solid card stock and that's where the gel plates come in because you're not actually adding lots of different colour and patterns so that the image becomes distorted when it's cut but you are adding enough to give it interest. 
Okay, so let's now just pop out all of these pieces. Again, a really thick cardstock, so this might take a moment. I'm just going to loosen everything I can with my hands. In fact, the watercolour cardstock is still a touch damp, so I'm surprised I didn't have any issues cutting it, but doesn't seem to have had. Let's just get all those pieces out. I think I might get my pokey tool into the smaller areas. Okay, so I've popped all the pieces out. My die is still clean. If you want to take a look at this one, I'll make sure this is also linked down below. As you can see, it's a stunning die, but it also comes with, oh, it's just over here, the outer frame. So if you do want to cut it with a really nice, perfect border, you can do that. If you cut it just as I have with the die alone, you're going to get that effect where you have it inside your cardstock and it doesn't have the outer frame cut out, but I didn't need that today. So just pop these in the bin and let's lay this over the blue and see how we're looking. Look at that texture. Isn't that just absolutely stunning? So, so pretty. Um, yeah, I really, I'm really pleased with that. I love that. So that's all going to be going on to my card. So I need to trim this down first of all. I think I might add a little bit of stamping in the background of this. And I think I might then make sure this is perfectly dry and do some a little heat embossing to add some white areas back in to lighten it up ever so slightly. It won't be a huge amount, um, but just enough to give it even more texture and depth. So first thing first, trim this down to size here and then find my stamps. Now, very basic card making here, but when I'm trimming a panel down to fit, so I'm doing mats and layers for a card, what I tend to do is cut two of the edges. And then I tend to use a pokey tool to just scratch a line in. So I've got this border of probably around about five millimetres and I'm going to come in five millimetres here and just scratch into my paper here with my pokey tool and the same here. So lots of you all know how to do your mats and layers, but if you are new to card making, um, I think this is just a really cool trick. Using a pencil, you then have to rub the pencil lines out afterwards if they still show. Um, and sometimes people are like, well, how do I, if I've got a large cast, how do I work out my mats and layers without having to really accurately measure? So then I just take this into my trimmer. I make sure I'm trimming an edge that's not going to then trim off in either of my marks or my second mark and I'm just going to pop one and this one just here and that should be a perfect mat then for my card base there we go absolutely lovely okay so let's find my stamps this is a stamp set from Lindsay Weirich. We have um, at Craft Stash, Lindsay has joined us with her brand, The Frugal Crafter. And this is a set of stamps that came out not so long ago. And I absolutely adore these stamps for mixed media, for art journals, things like that. They're perfect for adding just a little bit of background noise or background pattern or texture to your cards. And this is another simple trick if you're not sure whether your paper is dry and ready to do heat embossing on. So just some clear embossing powder, just sprinkle it all over, make sure you've covered everything, tap it off, just making sure. And I've got nothing sticking there at all. So if I go in with my white embossing powder, it's only going to stick to where the wet ink is. So that's perfect, I can carry on now. But if your clear powder does stick to your project, so you've clearly got damp areas still, all you need to do is leave it another 10 minutes and try again, because once the cardstock is dry, all that powder will just naturally drop off. You can collect it, put it back in the pot. So you're not wasting it, you're not losing it. It's not forever going to be stuck to your project. So I'm just going to use my anti-static bag because I'm going to be heat embossing just to make sure that with my fingers that generally have nail cream uh, or hand cream on them all the time, um, they're not going to have any greasy deposits on there, but also just static can hold on to particles of your powder and grip them where you don't want them. So this is the script. I can't actually see. I've got a feeling it's probably that direction. And I'm just randomly going to stamp this, not with a block either. I just want a bit of texture in here. At the moment, my favourite white embossing powder to use is the Ranger one. This is super fine, so it's perfect for detail like this. 
but I am running low so I need to sprinkle it all over the surface and give it a little side to side jiggle just to make sure I've got enough there perfect absolutely perfect that's all I need a little bit of extra texture in there and then put the lid on before I do anything and heat set this now I never glue my panel down onto my card until I've laid everything together for the card and I'm happy because I might want to go around the edges with say some black ink just to give it a bit of a vignette and the last thing I want to try and do is do that when it's already glued down. So as you can see my panel here is larger or rather shorter sorry so I'm going to trim this down and I'm going to have the top and bottom showing but I'm going to make a feature of these parts by doing some machine stitch so I need to get this trimmed down correctly this at the moment is only roughly trimmed down so I'm going to do it you can do it with a trimmer I, I'm quite confident doing it with just a large pair of scissors because as I say I'm going to be using my machine to stitch along these anyway so I'm quite happy with the kind of rough look and then I'm going to do the same here so position that where I think I'd like it both edges have got white on them now I'm going to flip this over and I'm going to trim along the edges. So again, just making sure that that is straight, that didn't look straight. There we go. So that's trimmed down to size. Now, before I put that on here, this does, I feel it does need some depth. So I'm going to go in with a little and only a tiny little bit of black soot in the distress range. So very, very lightly. I'll put a mat under here. And I'm just going to brush along the edges. And I'm kind of trying to brush upwards rather than across so as not to come into the design too far, but just capture the very, very edges there. Hopefully you can see that on the larger flowers and you'll definitely see it once we put it back on the card. It will also help it blend into that darker blue background a little. A bit more there. Okay, I might just do a little in the centres of the larger areas as well. And this is going to help with that depth. Just brushing those edges okay hopefully that's enough uh, just using a small head blending brush there so hopefully you can see there the difference that that's made just to make that stand out even more i think i'll do a little bit of stamping i think for this one i'd like to add um something that's almost recognizable but not quite can't not quite make it out so i've got a very old sentiment stamp here um I can't even read it backwards now. I can't remember. Well, we'll see if we can read it once it's put on. But I'm just going to roughly stamp some areas on here. I've not used this for a long time. There we go. So it's just adding a few words in there. The word try comes out quite a lot. I think I bet there's the word believe in solid at the bottom. And I'm just going to that there so that's just added a little bit of texture you can't see it very much but that's what I wanted a bit like the white strips that we had I just don't want it standing out too much perfect okay so I'm happy with those two layers what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go to my sewing machine I'm going to probably um, I think I'm going to actually leave this off of the blue and stitch two lines of straight stitching along there um, I might need to put it onto some uh, kitchen towel to hold it still and help guide it through the machine. But what I'll do is I'll show you when I come back how I then remove that kitchen towel. And I'm going to do this in a black thread. Okay, so I have stitched both layers. I've done a line at the top here and the bottom as well on this one. Just straight stitch and then I've done the same here. And as I said, because this is a delicate floral panel, I added a few little dots of glue to the centre on the reverse just to glue it to some kitchen towel. Trimmed it down to size and this just gives it a little more stability because there's gaps in the design. It just helps keep it secure while it's going through the sewing machine. Now what I'm going to do is I can simply tear away the excess here but obviously you're left with some of it stitched to the back of your cardstock and that's really easy to get away just a little light spritz of water both sides give that a few seconds to soak in and then you should be able to really easily 
just tear away your kitchen towel. If you've got anything left over, just again, pull it back gently, dampen it a little more if you need to. Uh, but this is just a great way of keeping that stability, like I say, as it goes through the machine. And then when you turn it over, you can't see that kitchen towel at all. Got a little bit on the end there, just pull that away. And I like to do this in areas where I want stitching, if I want stitching to maybe go through, I don't know, over a gap or something, because you're still left with the threads in place um, afterwards once you've taken the kitchen towel away. So it's another technique for you if you like to use a sewing machine at all with your paper craft projects. Now I think I'm going to leave the threads for both ends completely open like this. I'm probably going to add a little bit of black to the edge of this one. As I said, I thought I might, or it was a possibility, just because I do find that that really helps with that sort of vignette look, bringing everything together. I prefer to use Distress Ink for this rather than an oxide. If I use an oxide, it's more of a charcoal colour than a black, a solid black and you don't quite get the same dark effect. And to adhere this panel onto my card front, I'm going to use foam. So that's going to be foam at the top and bottom along the strips and then small pads in between just to capture underneath the flowers. So just placing that down there, we've now got that tiny bit of depth and dimension in there and that's all going to sit perfectly on our card. Now because there's so much texture in there I don't want to add too much over the top and bombard it. I want us to be able to see all the beautiful distressing that we've created and all those different colour tones. So I'm going to add a sentiment. I think I will come in with, I love the wild and free, I've always loved the wild and free um, sentiment there. We've got time flies, birthday love, the sky is the limit. Wild and free I think just perfectly matches the design that we've got here and I really like as well with this that it's actually just like two fonts and the ampersand is really really stunning so I think that's going to go there I think it's going to sit perfectly now to make this really stand out I'm going to do it in bright white so not only have I die cut this from white cardstock I've also backed it onto some black adhesive sheets so I can stick this on and it will just automatically give us a drop shadow. So still not placing this onto my card just yet. Um, will do soon. I'm just positioning this. I don't think I want it central. I think I do want it off to the side here. So we'll go there. Now this adhesive foam is great because you can reposition it for a short while if you need to. So something like this ampersand, which is quite flexible. It's quite handy to be able to have the opportunity to do that. So just placing those really fine, delicate areas down. There we go. I'm happy with that. One last finishing touch. I'm just going to splat some white around the sentiment so it kind of looks like there's some paint from putting the sentiment on there that's kind of gone astray. Uh, and that, I think that will be the card almost finished. So there's the finished card up close. So you can see we've kind of got a little bit of text on the yellow leaves there. You've got all that beautiful depth and dimension from those gel plate prints and the bold white sentiment. Hopefully keeping within that colour palette that is Corinne's colour challenge for this month. Go and find the details over on her Facebook page. I've linked that down below for you and don't forget you've got the chance to win those three textures die sets that I'll send out once Corinne has picked a winner. Thank you for joining me today everybody. Take care and I'll see you again very soon.